Welcome back, and thank you for joining for another whiskey review. Today, we're going to take a look at an old whiskey, Deanston, 30 years old, 2010 bottling, cast strength at 46.7% ABV. And, i got to tell you, very interesting looking package. Basically, um, if you ever played this, uh, it reminds me of this video game I played uh, back in the 80s called Elevator Action. It almost feels like an elevator, you know, coming in and out of this little packaging. Very, very unique packaging. Um, bottle comes in this little thing that holds it back, and it has a little pamphlet with it. It talks about, I'm guessing, the whiskey in the distillery. I, I've read it before. It's just been a long time. Yeah, so it just kind of talks about tasting notes, a few things about the distillery. Ian McKellen, uh, the um, master distiller, so comes with some information right there, just kind of tell you a little bit about the whiskey and what you should pick up as far as a flavor profile. But fortunately, I have an opinion about that, so that's what I'm going to show you guys. But first, let me show you the bottle. And again, this is 46.7% ABV, Deanston, 30 year old, cast strength. Um, this was a Old Rosso Sherry cask finished whiskey, meaning it was aged. It was aged primarily in ex bourbon barrels, and then it had Oloroso Sherry cast finish. Um, from what I've read, I believe the final two years had the Oloroso Sherry cast finish. So that's a long finishing. Two years is not a small amount of time. And with a good whiskey, I always pour myself a little bit more. But two years, final two years of maturation in that Oloroso Sherry. So very, uh, very long time in a nice, fresh sherry cast to finish this whiskey off. All right, so I've done one Deanston for you guys, Deanston 12. Um, I have a 20 that I'm going to bring you as well. wanted to bring you this 30 since I've had this bottle for probably 10, 11 months. I was uh, visiting a friend of mine in Indianapolis. I'm from Columbus. Um, drove to Indianapolis, which is about 150 miles away. And uh, we are having a little drinking. And he had an end of a Deanston 30 that I've never even seen before. And he said, oh, well, what do you think of it? And I enjoyed it. And he said, well, hey, man, down the street, uh, I know of two places that have one still for $2.99. So 300 bucks. So I was like, hey, you know what? If you don't mind, I'd like to get one. So he had me jump in his car, and we went and got the last two available. Uh, really interesting because that was 2019, and the bottles had been sitting there on the shelves for nine years. So they were in some Dusties. Um, and unfortunately the cork disintegrated on me, so I have to give a thank you to my buddy Keith from the Malted Man Cave for giving me a new cork off one of his Deanston 20 year olds. If not, I didn't know what I would have done. Uh, but uh, fortunately, um, on the way back I stopped at Keith, opened the bottle with him, and the bottle of the cork broke, and he had a backup there for me. Alright, so let me tell you a few things about Deanston, um, Highland Distillery. Um, it's really south in the Highlands, like I, I would think based on where it's located that would be the Lowlands, but Apparently it's, it's a Highland whiskey. Um, I think it's right, basically right there on the border. Um, Deanston, I think the name, or at least uh, the new building, the new stills went up, I think in 1965. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else I want to say about this one. Uh, usually Deanston's used a lot of blends, um, is what I read. So to get um, regular bottlings isn't the easiest thing, at least here in Columbus, Ohio, and especially not something as rare as this 30 year old, which again, I didn't even know it existed and tell my buddy from Indianapolis um, clued me in on it. So thank you to the whiskey verse, if, if you will. All the people that are big fans of single malt Scots whiskey. Um, so Corey, you know, uh, you did me a solid on this one, man. I really appreciate it. All right, so natural color, unchill filtered. So let me give you that color. It's a very rich sherry gold. Yeah, I would almost say deeper than gold. Cherry gold plus two, I would say. Very, very dark, very rich looking whiskey. All right, let's give it a little swirl around the glass and tell you guys what I think about the nose. This, this is one that's changed quite a bit as I've worked my way down the bottle. Initially, blind, I couldn't tell much of a difference between this and the uh, Balvenie 25 year old single barrel. Other than there was that um, gritty barley note that I get in all Deanston's. I'll get more than that later. But right away, I'm getting three things. I'm getting honey, I'm getting raisins, and I'm getting that, that what I call a dirty uh, barley note that I describe in Deanston's. Um, Deanston to me kind of comes off, not comes off, but it's going on the same road as say, Springbank or Long Row, where it's a very earthy note to it, 
but this one is a little more specific. This is a earthy barley note um, that I pick up in just all the instants. But this one you don't get it as much as say you do the 20 or the 12, but it's still absolutely right there. So that's what I'm getting. I'm getting that er very earthy barley. Honey, raisins, and then sweetness. The sweetness takes over on the nose. Caramel. Vanilla. <clears throat> um, a light sherry note. But you can tell it's a sherry finishing, but a deep sherry finishing. I said this with the Craig Alkey 23-year-old review. It reminds me in some ways, some basic notes as a Balvini 17-year-old double wood, meaning that, that second maturation finish, but this is just done so much so much uh, deeper. The finishing on this, this Oloroso cast finishing, is, is adds a richness to it that really can't be understated. Very malty. It's nutty. This is also when it transitions. You know, I can get some sweet notes, I can get that caramel, and then it, it moves over to a nutty, barley, earthy note. Then you go back and you pick up some citrus notes, maybe maybe a little bit of orange. The, the oil from an orange peel, is, is like a, it's condensed orange. Then the raisin comes back in. Honey, whew, man. If you like Deanston, I gotta, it's worth me telling you, um, try to get your hands on this bottle. It's not going to be an easy bottle to get. There weren't a ton of them made. They, did, they made it way back in 2010. But again, they were at a, a random, two random liquor stores in Indianapolis, Indiana at the end of 2019. Incredible. Incredible. People don't know what they are. Which can work to your advantage. Work to your advantage. Dean's Thin, I've never thought was really an overpriced whiskey in general. You know, I can get Dean's Thin 20s for a little over $100 shipped to me here in Columbus, Ohio. So normally you think of a third year old whiskey and you get it for 300 bucks, you're thinking, wow, man, that's, that, that's a great price. But Deansons in general aren't, aren't insanely priced. I tell you what, now I'm getting this nice milk chocolate note. Clove, I said nuttiness before, it's clove. And maybe like a dusty note. Looks like you're in a bakery and they're throwing a little white flour. Um, like to say that you're, someone's about to make pizza or something like that and they're kneading the dough and then they're throwing the white flour on top of it. Um, after uh, basketball season was done when I was a senior in high school, I took a job um, last couple of months of my senior year in high school to deliver pizzas. And while I was a delivery guy, you know, every once in a while I had to jump in and help, help the guys make pizza if they were behind. And, you know, I'd do the more basic things like just kind of getting dough ready and things of that nature. And kind of when I would need the dough and I'd grab the flour and throw more flour into the dough if it was needed. I'm getting a little bit of that flour on dough note. It's almost dusty, dry flour. And a little bit of spice too. It's moving all over the place. Re really, really nice. So I've rambled a little while, it's time to take the first sip. Mm. Wow, spice, strong, strong flavors on the palate. Spice, clove, honey, vanilla. But a, but a, but a not bland, bland probably isn't the right word. A dry spice, like um, like a dry rub spice, like on brisket or something. It's dry spice. Now some orange citrus is coming up. Absolutely clove. Um, I remember being young and making like this this ornamental reef, and it had um, like a little dried clove that we kind of put on the edge of it, mainly for aesthetics, but also help the reef kind of smell better. I'm getting a lot of that clove on the palate that I would get as far as a smell on that reef I made when I, when I was a kid. Um, yeah, orange, honey, um, kind of a, a, a dry rub spice to it, dry rub cinnamon, um, and then like that barley note again, but just on the palate, like that earthy, earthy barley note. It reminds me again in a lot of ways, or at least part of it does, 
of the Balvenie 25 year old single barrel. Um, I know it's a rare whiskey, not a lot of people have had a chance to try it, but just that old honey and that old vanilla that you get off of a bourbon cask when you let it sit there for 25, 26, 27 years, in this case, 28 years, there's, there's a richness to it, but then also a very dry spice element to it is probably the best way I can describe it. Um, and now maybe just at the end here, it's kind of just a little bit of plum. But a very, very inviting nose and a very, very interesting palate. Um, 46.7 isn't a huge ABV, but it is cast strength. I verified that on three different sites as far as um, ensuring that there, this was not diluted at all. Now on the nose, it doesn't feel like, oh, cast strength. Now I know after 30 years, that's a low ABV, but it doesn't, it doesn't jump out at you even at 46.7. But on the palate, it's a different story. On the palate, it is very aggressive um, as far as the strength of the flavors. Now, that's not to be confused with the fact that I'm getting alcohol, because I'm really not getting alcohol on it, but the strength of the flavors is very, very strong. And normally I would attribute that to the alcohol driving the flavor, um, which again, 46.7 is a good ABV, but I was surprised by how much it really kind of jumped uh, once it hit my tongue. Um, so all right, so I had a little bit of water. Uh, let's get a little swirl. See if we can pick up anything else. Well, I don't know of anything else, but I'm getting definitely that earthy barley note so much stronger now with a few drops of water. And I did add about three or four drops of water, a little bit more than I wanted to, but earthy barley, a little more citrus, a little more orange, orange oil, orange zest, clove again, and so distinctively clove. I mean, I, I've said nuttiness before, and I've said um, other spices and things like that, but it is so clove. As a matter of fact, going forward, if I say clove, I will use this as my standard as far as what I think clove smells like, because it this is it. Yeah, and then a little bit of that, what I always like to, what I always call that Balvini rich honey, it's there. I know it's a Dean's thing, but it's there in this one. Again, this is the second time I've kind of harkened back to a Balvenie. That Again, the Craig Allocke 23, which I recently reviewed too. I, I said that a few times in that review as well. And um, a lot about those whiskeys. I think probably the sherry finishing reminds me a lot of some nicer, older Balvenies. Talking 17-year-old, 21-year-old Fort Wood, 25-year-old single barrel. <clears throat> yeah, so... With water, I don't think water did it a ton of favors. I think it, well, let me put it this way. If you prefer that Dean's Thin, very um, um, earthy barley note, water definitely brings more of that up. To me, I like some of the more light honey, vanilla, caramel flavors to it on the nose. I'm also probably getting a little bit more citrus on this one. Um, that citrus is definitely orange, orange zest, orange oil, orange peel, if you will. Maybe a fruity plum kind of makes its way in there at the end. Yeah, dynamite. Dynamite nose. Great whiskey. $300. Definitely worth it if you can find it for that. All right, one more sip and I'll give you a score. <sighs> dusty club and spice. And dusty is the only way I can describe it. Dusty clove, dusty spice, it's dry. Orange citrus coming in at the end. Honey, vanilla, ridge of caramel right here towards the end. Lovely whiskey, excellent, excellent, excellent whiskey. Super happy to pick this up. Corey, you know you found this for me, man. I really appreciate you being a solid dude. Give me the last drink of the one you had to try it and then give me one of the two that you knew were still left in the area because this one isn't gonna be coming back anytime soon. As far as a whiskey score, I'm gonna give this a 91 out of 100. This is an impressive bottle. I'm not over the moon for Deanston. I, I, I like the whiskeys. They've been Deanstons I've liked. They've been Deanston I thought were mediocre. Um, it's very much an acquired taste. It begin because of that rich, earthy barley note that I find in almost all of them. It's almost, you know, spring bank funkish dirty, or at least it's halfway to that sort of dirty funk note. It's going in the same path, if you will. Like Springbank is headed west and it's 300 miles down the road. And Deanston's headed west, but it's only like 25, 30 miles down the road. So it's got some catching up to do to get to that level of funkiness, but it's there and it's going down the same road. Maybe it gets there. 
hope it doesn't because I really like kind of where this is at. It's a little bit of funk. It's a compliment. It's not the major player. Anyway, I'm in 91 out of 100. If you guys have had the opportunity to taste such a rare bottle, uh, I'd like to know what you, your thoughts are. Um, I probably know like one other guy to have this bottle. It's a whiskey reviewer. Um, I can't remember who the guy was. Uh, the guy does the bourbons outside. The guy who's like the geologist. Ah, it's leaving my mind. Anyway, um, 91 out of 100. Really good whiskey. If you can get your hands on it, I definitely recommend it. If you're a Deanston fan, definitely, definitely, definitely recommend it if you're a fan of Deanston. Um, so, until next time. Well, like always, I wish everyone happy drinking and uh, see you in the comments section. Until then.